Hey friends, my name is Jake. Welcome to Canadian Cutting Edge. And this is a Canadian Cutting Edge University lecture. It's my master class on how to spot a counterfeit knife. No, no, not master class. I am just a knife nerd um, that wants to share some ideas with you. I've got some ideas about how to spot counterfeits. And some of these things are... Um, you know, fairly straightforward, but maybe not everybody's thought of them. So I'm going to share some ideas uh, or things that you can do to help try to figure out if the knife that you have is a counterfeit. And I'm going to talk a little bit about how to uh, reduce the odds of buying a counterfeit knife. And uh, I'm going to try to do this uh, with not a lot of counterfeit knives that I have, because I really don't have very many. So hopefully you get something out of this. If you do, please leave a comment. Uh, give it a thumbs up. If you don't get nothing out of it, give it a thumbs down. And, uh, you know, we'll just go on from there. Thank you very much. Keep watching. In the last number of years, have I gotten counterfeit knives? Yes, I have. Uh, when I first got uh, my Ontario Rat 1, this is not the first one that I got, but it's just representing it. And I've already, I've changed this uh, to one of those uh, wave action um, snaggle tooth things. So yeah, that's definitely different. But uh, my first Ontario Rat 1, it looked a lot like this. But its action was not good at all. Oh, here, I got to turn this light on. That's better, isn't it? Uh, the action wasn't that good, and um, I had not, uh, the first time I got one, I had not touched an Ontario Rat 1 before. I live uh, in fairly isolated places. You know, the nearest knife store is 100 kilometers away, 60 mile drive. Uh, no, I don't go that often, and uh, when I do go to the city, I'm usually with my family, and uh, they want to do other things than sit in a knife store. So, I ordered my first Ontario Rat 1, and what I got looked a bit like it, but it was different. And uh, I'm just going to go over some of those things on how to tell if your knife is a counterfeit or not. And uh, I've got some counterfeits to look at. Okay, so what do you do if you suspect your knife is counterfeit? One of the first things you need to do is you need to start doing some homework. What you need to do is, let's say that I think my Ontario Rat 1 is counterfeit. The first thing you have to do is the first thing that I, su I suggest for any type of counterfeit product whatsoever, and that is get familiar with the original, the genuine, the real thing. Get familiar with it, as familiar with it as you can. So. You have to do your homework. Well, how do you do that? Well, you want to compare your knife with the real thing. What if you don't have a real thing nearby? Well, you're going to have to find a way to look at the real thing in detail. Thankfully, these days we've got this wonderful invention called the internet, and you can take a good look at knives. So what I did is I started looking for pictures of uh, the Ontario Rat 1, uh, and the best place to look, <laughs> Ontario website. Uh, Ontario uh, Knives Company website, and then I started to look at other places, other websites. I did a Google search, although you can do it with Bing or with whatever search you want. I use those three words uh, interchangeably. Co clone, counterfeit, fake, those are all the same thing. Uh, whereas what Genzo does, I call those copies. Um, clones, counterfeits, fakes, all are trying to trick you into thinking you're getting something that you're not. Uh, let's say when you buy a Ganzo, it says Ganzo or Firebird right on the knife. You know you're not getting, you know, a uh, lion steel or something else. You're getting a Ganzo. So those are copies. Uh, clones, counterfeits, fakes are trying to trick you into buying something that's not real. Uh, so several companies have their own departments for that or email addresses or whatever for that. I know, I know Buck does and some other places do. And uh, you can take some really good pictures of your stuff hopefully, and you email them to them and you ask them what do they think, if it's real or not, and they'll let you know. Oh, by the way, 
step two is yeah, contact the website, company the that mom, makes the real social thing. media, Facebook, Instagram. You know, the, those are the two main places where a lot of companies have a presence. And you can contact them through those things. And most companies will answer and you can ask them, oh, I've got a knife that I think is counterfeit. Can you help me figure it out? And you start from there. If you're not doing that, what are the main things that you're going to look for? That's the next section. What are the main points that counterfeiters get wrong? Number one, the labels. The labels that they put on the knife. You know, Ontario Knife Company, they've got several different types of labels. So don't just assume that yours is a, a fake because it looks different than the first picture you look at. Some companies have got a series of labels. Most of them stick with the same thing all the time. And then the writing that they put on the Ricasso or somewhere else. Check out the font. Is the font exactly the same font? Is the size the same size? Is the intensity of the writing the same? Uh, on this side, it says Taiwan. So check both sides. And you really want to check all those things. Uh, next thing you want to check is the hardware. One of the big giveaways on the fake Ontario rat that I had was it had just, you know, regular silver colored hardware, uh, just satin steel. Well, Ontario puts black hardware on their, on their rats. So that's another thing to look for. Look for really little things like this knife's got jipping on the liner lock release. Is that the same? Is it different? Check for is the lanyard hole the same? Is it in the same spot? Exactly or close? Uh, the hardware, if, if it's an open pillar construction, does it have a little backspacer? Eh, big mistake. Uh, but these ones, the interior rats got really plain uh, pillars, but uh, a lot of knives, you know, like this one right here, has got these curved ones. It's got little lines, little steps on it. Uh, you know, check and see if those are identical. Check and see if the edges where the steel liners meet the uh, handles, is that the same? The texture on the handles, is that the same? Uh, and then pocket clip is a really big thing. Pocket clips are often done wrong. So check the pocket clip, make sure it's done the same. You know, if it's the same in this orientation, you know, or like this, you know, sometimes stupid little things like maybe it's got two screws where it's supposed to have three, you know, or it has three where it's supposed to have two, what, whatever you have. Uh, and then, you know, the labels on them, if there is one or not, those are all little things to pay attention to. And what if it looks exactly the same? You also need to pay attention to how it feels. Now, for that, you're probably going to have to watch video reviews or if you know somebody who has one, uh, they can tell you, did it take, you know, just a little while to break in? But the one you have, you've been trying forever to play with it, and it just is all um, stupid little things like, does it have washers when it's supposed to have ball bearings? Does it have ball bearings when it's supposed to have washers? Uh, another big thing is, are the washers identical? Um, you know, if the original one's got phosphor bronze washers, uh, what's the fake doing with the white nylon washers? On a liner lock or a frame lock? Make sure that the way the knife looks, if you can see it, um, where the lock, where the end of the blade is, make sure that's the same shape. Is the stop pin exactly in the same spot or not? Uh, those are all important things that you can check. And some other people might have some other ideas, but once you're looking at the blade, you're going to look at the jimping or even the jimping on the handle anywhere. Is that identical or is it just close? Uh, is there a swedge or is the spine of the blade the same? Is it rounded the same? Does it have more roundedness? Does it have a chamfer when it's not supposed to or the other way around? The belly of the knife, is this shape exactly the same? Because on the manufactured ones, they're going to make them the same every single time. Is that a little bit off? Does it come more to a point? you know, less of a drop or more of a drop, you know, all those different things. You're looking for all of those differences uh, to save you from having to contact somebody else or to
to get you to submit the right pictures when you're submitting them to the knife company. You know, if you think that the uh, logos are a little bit off, but you're not sure, well, make sure you take good pictures of those because that's what they're going to want to look at. You know, if you see things that you think might be a little different, but you're not sure, those are the things you take pictures of. What else do you do? You check things like weight. If you've got a scale that goes down to grams or, you know, goes down to fine uh, weight measurements, weigh your knife. It should be very close to what the company says it's supposed to be. Of course, there's always a little bit of variance. And sometimes I notice some websites where, you know, the weights are, you know, a quarter of an ounce different than what mine is. That's not a big a deal. But once you're getting to half an ounce difference, if you're getting to like, you know, 10, 15 grams difference, that's a big deal. And you'll need to pay attention to that. The sizes are all the numbers the same for the specs. Again, some companies are a little less accurate than others and try to get the information from the manufacturer and not from a store. Stores are often wrong with their measurements. Uh, almost every company does have a web presence somewhere. One other thing to do when you are taking pictures, uh, put a measuring tape beside it so you know, the picture shows, you know, at least one of your pictures with the length of it or whatever shows what it really is. You know, so that the company knows that, you know, it's not a size difference. What are you going to do if you've tried all of that and you just haven't gotten anywhere? Well, now it's time to start contacting people you don't know but are not the company. And one of the best places for that is bladeforums.com. If I don't do much on bladeforums.com, but sometimes I lurk there, I go and I search things out and I try to get information, uh, but uh, it's a good place. You can submit uh, pictures sometimes to people. Maybe you'll find a forum group that is all about, you know, Ontario rats, or it's all about falcon evens, you know, or whatever, and uh, they might be able to help you as well. So that's what I do to try to find out. The next subject is, how do I lower the odds that I'm going to get um, a fake knife? So here I've got a falcon even. And um, I th somebody gave this to me. Uh, I believe that they believed that it's genuine. I don't know for sure. Uh, but this is far from a genuine knife. And uh, a number of things are wrong with it. Uh, it didn't have a convex grind. Uh, the logo here, uh, that's wrong. <laughs> the sharpener's choil is wrong. Uh, the drop point, you know, the angles, those are wrong. Uh, on the sheath, see how these have nice shiny letters in there? Well, the original, those are matte. The retention here, the clips, that is longer, has a longer tab before it ends. This is cut right next to the button. These rivets here are shiny. They're supposed to be matte. Same with on the back. You know, and it's once you start knowing what to look for, you can start finding all these things really quick. So you start doing what I suggested on the pictures that the person who's selling it to you has. Now, very often, uh, if somebody's selling you a counterfeit, they're going to have pictures of the original, so you can't really avoid that. But what else can you avoid? Well, look for the price. Is the price close to the price that reputable stores, that you are convinced are reputable stores, are selling the knife for? So you check out Blade HQ. You check out White Mountain Knives. You check out, you know, Smoky Mountain Knife Works, what have you. You check out stores that you know you can trust. How is it the quarter of the price when it's supposed to be a brand new knife? So is the price near the same? Now, if you're buying in the used market, still the same thing holds. Uh, if a knife is new, 200 US dollars, and they're selling you one that's in new condition, but it's slightly used, and they're selling it for $45, something's wrong here. You know, it, they just probably are not that cheap. Uh, 
And you can look around the market, you know, what the going rate is for used knives too. A little bit harder, but you can do it. So there's that that you can do. Uh, what else you can do? Can you do? Well, you can choose where you shop. Um, I sometimes shop on Amazon, and so I like Amazon. Sometimes their prices are good, sometimes they're not. But if I find something on Amazon, one of the first things I do is on the Amazon page, you can find on the right hand side, part way down, it tells you where it's going to ship from. If it's shipping from an Amazon warehouse, then I don't mind buying it because if there's a problem with it, I can return it. No problem. Um, if I'm buying it from another store, yeah, just can't be totally sure what's going to happen, uh, especially if they ship separately. Maybe it's going to take an awful lot lot longer to get the thing, or you know, I just don't trust it. Same thing on, um, I don't buy knives on eBay. I well, there's a few places I do. I know that there's one uh, Tucson seller who is you know the, basically the Tucson factory seller, and I'm happy to buy from them. Uh, but look at on eBay, look at the history that the company has. You know, look at the interactions, you can see exactly what the uh, rating is that shoppers have given them. If they don't have a very, very high rating, uh, for me, it's 98%. That's my cutoff. If if a store's got less than 98% rating, I'm not buying from them because I just don't want to try to return a fake knife to China, you know, having to pay shipping to send it all the way back there or whatever. Uh, whereas the reputable people, they'll often say, you know, there's a problem with it. Yeah, keep it. We'll send you a new one because it's just not worth the money to send it back. Um, if you're buying on a place like um, the buy and sells or the knife channels on uh, Facebook, yeah, you just have to choose to take the risk. That's my opinion anyways. And I just don't like to take those risks the, all that often. So buy from reputable stores. Uh, the more expensive the knife is, the closer it should be to the manufacturer's price, in my opinion. So like I said, if it's a $200 knife and it sells in most places for $200, the price has got to be close to $200. Whereas the really budget kinds of things like Sanren Mews, well, this is a fake Sanren Mew that I got and I made a video about this already. In fact, I got these two knives. These are both fake Sanren Mews. And I did a video on it and I pointed out, you know, how the logo was the giveaway. You know, and some people don't believe me, but, you know, that's just fine. It's neither here nor there. But the the knives that were fake were very much the same price as the knives that were real. And so sometimes you just can't avoid it. And so for the cheap knives, um, the less expensive the knife is, the more important it is to buy from a reputable source. Some stores, even though they're legitimate stores, have more fakes than others. And it tends to be that, you know, Asian stores, Chinese stores, they tend to have more fakes in uh, for sale uh, than other stores do. Uh, if you are an American and you can get the knife from an American store, I would suggest you buy it there, even if it costs you a little bit more money. Especially if the one that's in the Chinese store is a whole lot less. You know, the odds are very high that you're going to be buying a fake. So that's a summary of what I have to share with you. Do you have some specific ideas that I didn't mention? Let us know down in the comments below. Um, have you ever had a fake? And how did you find out it was it was fake? Those kinds of stories I'd like to see down below. And I just want to thank you for watching this video. Thank you for liking, sharing, commenting, and subscribing. I hope it was helpful to you. And remember, friends, always cut towards your chum, not your thumb. Bye for now.